Rambam, Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day, Kilaim, chapter 8. Halacha 1. When vines grow in their natural manner, with their branches and their clusters lying on the earth, the place where they grow is called a vineyard, Kerem. When, however, a person creates something like a bed or a platform raised above the earth, so that the clusters and the branches will be extended over it, and he lifted up the vol foliage of the vines from the ground unto that trellis and draped them over it, it is called an aris. The branches and the like from which the trellis or platform was made and upon which the foliage of the vine is draped are called apiperot. Different laws apply to an aris. Halacha 2. When a person plants one row of five or more vines and drapes them over a wall that is ten handbreadths high or the like, or he planted them on the side of a trench that is ten handbreadths deep and four handbreadths wide, they are also classified as an aris. It is necessary to separate from an aris four cubits before sowing other produce similar to the separation required in a vineyard. Halacha 3. From where do we measure? From the base of the fence over which he draped them, what is implied? He made a separation of a cubit between the row of vines and the wall. Thus the aris is made from the vines and the wall. He should, he should measure four cubits from the wall and sow. Thus there are five cubits between the crops, crops sown and the base of the vines. If he seeks to sow on the side of the vines, he should separate four cubits from the base of the vines. Thus he is five cubits away from the wall. This is the pattern followed when dealing with any aris. Halacha 4. Whether one built the fence and then planted the vines, or planted the vines and then built the fence, since he draped the vines on the fence it is considered as an arras. If the fence was destroyed or the trench filled, the arras ceases to exist and the entire row is considered as individual vines. Halacha 5. When an arras is destroyed in the middle and there remain five vines on one side of the fence and five vines on the other side of the fence opposite it, it is called separate portions of an arras. If there are eight cubits and one sixtieth of a cubit between them, one must separate only, separate only six handbreadths between each row before sowing, provided he does not sow beneath the trellises as explained. Halakha 6. If there is exactly eight cubits between them, one should not bring seed there. If he did sow other crops there, since he separated six handbreadths from each of the rows of, the, of vines, the produce is not hallowed. If there is no fence there, all that is necessary is to separate six handbreadths from each row and sow it. For there is no aris, nor the separated portions of an aris. If you went back and rebuilt the fence, aris is considered to have been renewed, or the separated portions of an aris to have been renewed. Halakha 7. The following laws apply when there is a small garden that is surrounded by a fence and one, and one draped the vines growing around it on the outside on all of its walls. If the garden contains the space for a reaper and his basket to stand on one side, and the space for a reaper and his basket to stand on the other side, one may sow vegetables in it, because it is surrounded with a fence. If it is not that large, one may sow on it, because the entire area appears as one aris with vegetables on it. Halacha 8. The following laws apply when vines were planted on a terrace, and their trellis extends and gives shade over a field. If one can stand on the earth and, tr and harvest the entire vine, we consider the entire area under the vine as if it was the base of the vines and forbid a radius of four cubits in the field on every side of the edge of the trellis. If he cannot reap the grapes unless he steps on a step or a ladder, it is forbidden only to sow under the trellis itself. Halakha 9. When there are two walls perpendicular to each other and vines are planted in the corner between them, trellis extends outward from the corner and ends in the midst of the area. One may separate the required measure from the base of the vines and sow in the place where the trellis ends and there is no aris. Although the cross was sowed between two walls between which there is an aris, since he separated the required measure, he may sow other crops between the walls. Halakha 10. The following rule applies when the trunk of a vine ascended above the ground, then became bent and extended along the earth, and then ascended like a knee. When we measure between the vine and other crops, six handbreadths or four cubits, we measure only from the end of the portion that rises up and not from the base of the first vine. Halakha 11. We have already explained that although one makes the required separation between the other crops, sown and the vine, it is necessary to be careful that the vine will not provide shade for the vegetables, nor may the vegetables provide shade for the vine. 
If one sowed veg sowed vegetables or grain and they grew and afterwards draped a vine over them, the straw of the crops are permitted, but the grain must be burned. If the roots of the vine emerged in the four cubits between the vineyard and grain, they must be uprooted. If the roots of the grain emerge within these four cubits, it is permitted. Halakha 12. All of the separations of required measures that are mentioned with regard to kilain are measured in cubits that are six ample handbreadths. One should not be constricted in measuring the forbidden areas with regard to kilain, for one should only constrict measurements when being stringent. Halakha 13. All of the measures in which separations are made between vines and grain or vegetables, sorry, or vegetables, apply only in Eretz Israel or in Syria, but in the diaspora it is permitted to sow other crops at the side of the vines, in a vineyard at the outset. In the diaspora it was forbidden only to sow two types of vegetables or grain and grape seeds in one handful. If one tells a Gentile child to sow such a mixture for him, with, for him in the diaspora, it is permitted. One should not, however, make such a statement to an adult, lest one also do so with a Jew. Halacha 14. Although it is permitted to sow vegetables at the side of a vineyard in the diaspora, the vegetable that is sown there is forbidden to be eaten even in the diaspora. This applies provided one sees the owner harvest it and sell it. If, however, one is in doubt whether the produce comes from there, it is permitted, as we explained in Hilchot Ma'achalot Asurot.